Welcome, Welcome to Bar Chat. Chat. That's, That's where it's at. at. I'm Lexi. I'm Bianca. And I'm Becca. And, and we're, we're chatting all things dance. dance. Today's episode is all about how we started TikTok, so I hope you guys enjoy. Out of the three of us, I think I was the one that started TikTok first, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I first downloaded TikTok in, it was like June 2019. So mm-hmm. it was right after I graduated high school. So I can't even imagine high school with TikTok. Like yeah. it happened right after, but it still wasn't what it is now. Mm-hmm. So I would say that like I downloaded it, not with the intentions of going viral in any way or like having a platform. It was more just like, oh, like I think my brother told me to download it. So yeah. I was like, oh, like I'm just going to do that. And I made like a couple funny videos every now and then, but didn't really think much of it. Then once I got to college freshman year, I was like, you know what? It would be cool to have a viral video. So I kind of just kept posting whatever, you know, just like seeing what would stick and nothing did <laughs> until it was like January 20. It was January 2020. And I had my first viral video and it ended up getting like 300,000 views. And that was insane because I haven't gotten more than like 200 views. So that was the coolest thing. And I remember that weekend I was going to Monsters, like the dance convention Monsters. Mm -hmm. And I remember just like checking my phone in between every class. And I was like, oh, my God, like it's still growing. It's still growing. And I remember it hitting 10K and like seeing the letter K was just the coolest thing. Because it's like it's like such a milestone for you because that's something that like you've never seen on your account so that was pretty cool i kept posting videos and then every now and then like a couple would get over 10k views and then that was it but it was when quarantine started which was when i really picked up Asked my brother yeah right. that, that's really when everyone started like posting on tiktok and going viral so my brother sammy who was 14 at the time he built a roller coaster in our backyard i think you guys have yeah, seen those videos crazy it's the coolest thing ever shout out to sammy he is incredible so he built this giant roller coaster that went from one end of our backyard to the other and it was completely rideable and he built it just with his bare hands like that was his quarantine project like some people I don't know started like exercising some people binge tv shows he some people ate chips all day some people ate chips all day (laughs) he built a roller coaster so I made a video and it was kind of like joking on like Phineas and Ferb yeah like I'm Candace he's Phineas and it was just like something silly like that I don't think I've ever seen the video actually really I can show it to you you didn't pop on my for you page (laughs) (laughs) I'll show it to you after but it was funny because I remember recording it and I was like this is so stupid I was like I'm not posting this because I remember my those are always the ones no that's the thing I was my brother was just so hard to work with. I was like, do this. And he like wouldn't do it. And I was like, I, I don't even want to do this anymore. Like, yeah. this isn't fun. And then I posted it and it got 7 million views. And wow. I was like, oh, OK, you know what? This is actually a pretty good idea. And from there, I got, I think, like 100,000 followers. Wow. And that's wow. when I started like my TikTok journey. And while that happened, I was still posting like every now and then like dance comedy stuff. Mm-hmm. And I kind of just took that and like ran with it. So every now and then I'd post like roller coaster stuff because I had people who wanted to like. <laughs> that know was your about niche. That. that was my niche at the time. But like simultaneously, I was still doing dance stuff, yeah. which is like where it really picked up. Yeah. And then I just kept posting and staying more consistent. And now I have 1.1 million followers yeah. on TikTok, which is pretty cool. I hit a million February 2022, which was a big milestone. So for exciting! Me. It was yeah. the coolest feeling ever. It went from K to M. It went from K to M. <laughs> You're like Whoa. one day. One day it'll be B. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but it was it's just like <laughs> <laughs> it's just such like a surreal feeling because like I had always joked about when I was younger I was like oh like, I'm gonna be famous one day yeah. and like not that this is like the fame that I joked about but this is pretty incredible yeah. especially for like someone my age who yeah. kind of just like started on a social media platform it's and crazy. grew this large so like I'm very grateful for all of these opportunities and for having a following such as large such as large as this <laughs> but sorry did you oh my, just rumble my, my stomach growl guys sorry I, I have it. I it's t- lunchtime <laughs> it but it's lunchtime. fine we're gonna keep going lunchtime. we're gonna push through but yeah that's a little bit of like my backstory of TikTok if one of you guys want to share who was next Becca, go ahead were you next okay um uh, so I started because over quarantine my sister had downloaded it like over winter break before quarantine but I started like posting and stuff around quarantine time but I kind of just posted oh it was actually summer I'm sorry it was summer of 2020 let me say the exact date I was posting like (laughs) probably 4 45 (laughs) a.m okay okay um no just kidding um I started posting over the summer and I got really into it and I wanted 
I wanted to go viral so badly, but I didn't know what I wanted to go viral for. So I posted like the most random videos, like cooking videos. Like I thought I was going to be like a lifestyle <laughs> yeah. gal. That's yeah. so funny. Like videos of me baking. I could show them to you. Or like I did one video where it was like, and I would spend so much time on these videos because they were like edited and stuff. Yeah. Like That's so funny. cleaning out my sister's closet. I and it would get like, any of those. yeah, because they have like 500 <laughs> views. That? Um, yeah, I post them, but they're archived now. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I see them. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll show That's them to so you. That's so funny. I can't imagine you doing anything We'll post like them dance. on the Bar Chat Instagram um, right. when we post this episode. Throwbacks, yes. Yeah. Yes. We'll, so, we'll show all of our videos that we're talking about on the Instagram. So oh, you guys yeah, can yeah, go yeah. Okay. refer to that after yeah. you watch and it's finish this episode. Bar what is it? What's at it? Bar Chat Podcast. Follow us. On TikTok and Instagram. Anyways, not as important as me. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Um, but so not really. So shifted your whole thing to dance um, well no there was a trend going around about the gas station orders and mm, i was I like that. oh my god i'm gonna that. do the dance competition orders and it started like getting views and i remember waking up in the morning and it had 14k and i was like oh my god i'm it like really viral is. this yeah. is so exciting and then it hit like in the 100k area and at the time i thought that was like i've made it like I yeah. made it. You and Charlie were like equals. Yeah, me and Charlie and were like, like at the same level, equals. obviously. <laughs> and then I kept posting content. And then the other video that did well was in um, like August of uh, 2020, like August, September of 2020. And that's what kind of kickstarted my career because then all the videos after that started doing well. Right. Then I started building. I was living in an apartment in LA with my sister at the time. And we would like think of the video ideas together. So like, yeah. it was so cute. We'd have like little business meetings. Like at night, we'd be like, okay, Becca, what video show you make tomorrow? Like, let's right, think about this. Your sister was also a TikToker, yeah, my, right? Well, or well, she was? Yeah, my sister was a dancer growing up. So she also uh -huh. had ideas. My sister's also um, a little famous on TikTok too, but she didn't get famous until um, that winter, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. But anyways, she invented the Hawker walk, but that's not important. Um, <laughs> no, that's still really cool, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, then I just kept posting and making dance videos. And that's when, like, I found you guys. Yeah. I remember yeah. me and Bianca, like, kind of watched each other grow. <laughs> yeah. Like, because I, well, I remember watching you grow, too, Bianca. Yeah, this is another, like, whole conversation that we can get into. But I yeah. remember seeing you pop up on my For You page right around, like, summer 2020. And I was like, I've never seen her before. That's and then, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just <laughs> no, because yeah, once I started posting, I feel like for like months, I just like lived on people's for you page because I just started yeah. doing like really well, like, and I posted like really often. Yeah, there's like time periods where it's like you just stay on the same people's for you yeah. page. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's times where you never get seen on their page, yeah. and, and then you'll come back and they're like, "Where you? Like, where have you been?" No, and it's yeah. like I haven't left. I just <laughs> like I don't know. It's funny. But Bianca, why don't you share with us all? So she started yesterday, which is really yeah. crazy because she's grown so much in a day. Wow, congratulations. Well, not that much, but no. So um, like a lot of people, I didn't have TikTok before quarantine or COVID. And I originally only downloaded the app to look at other people's videos with my friends because we were bored. Right. And that's what everyone was doing. We're like, oh, like TikTok's a thing. Let's go watch these videos. And then after a while... A couple of my friends were like, Bianca, like you should post some videos. And I was like, literally of what? I had no clue what I wanted to do. So I started just trying to do some of the trends that were like popular at the time. There was like some sort of like lip trend where like, I don't remember what it was. But anyways, I posted that. It got like 200 views. And I was like, was it this one? Like booty yes, so big? Yeah, it was. Well, it was the one where like your lips oh, are really like eat. No, like, no, 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 no. That's like you now. make your lips small and then you like make you them make big. them normal. No, you make oh. them normal. But so, <laughs> no, then. yeah, we'll have to link that somewhere. But uh, long story short, that flopped. And I was like, this <laughs> seems <laughs> this seems harder than I thought. Um, and then, you know, I kept posting like random little videos, maybe two or three more times. I stopped for a minute. And then I had this idea that I saw with a trend. Do you know the song Mr. Blue Sky? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was that trend where you walk. Oh, I remember this video. Yeah. Yeah. So I did that, but as different dancers in dance class. And that one is the one that first blew up for me. Blew up. How I many views? Quotes. Yeah. I believe it got around Three. like, <laughs> I believe it got around like 100,000 or 200,000. And crazy. it yeah. was crazy you because like, I was like, oh my goodness, like yeah. this can actually happen. Right. Weird. So 
I think of myself as like a very business oriented person. So if I see that something's working, I'm going to stick with it. So I never intended for my page to be a dance page, but after that, I was like, let me post a couple more and like, see what happens. And people were liking those videos. So I started that I was probably, you know, after that, I didn't go viral for a while. It was like 5,000 views, 3000 views, but still more than you're used to. That's still that a point. lot though. Yeah. And then I was gaining, you know, like, oh, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000. Then I hit into the teens of like September, 2020. And that's and when I, we were looking at each other. And yeah. I thought that that was like so amazing. Yeah, I was like, it, is. it is amazing. But I was like, there's so many people that are actually clicking follow and want to see what I'm doing. Like that's right. crazy, you know? And I've always wanted to do content creation and film and edit and post on social media always so it was really cool um and then later that year i posted again like different things that dancers say and that one really took off for me at the time i got like over a million on it wow but there was the morning of i woke up and the night before it had, had like no views the next morning that's the coolest feeling when you wake up yes. and it's like surprise <laughs> yes it had like 300,000 and then that day I was like stalking my phone and the yeah. numbers were skyrocketing fast and that never re- even happens yeah. now yeah, yeah that hasn't it's happened like in a year notifications <laughs> yeah. you know how if it's like 99 plus you swipe it goes away they would like pop up immediately 99 plus um, yeah and the high you get from that yeah <laughs> well it, it feels like it's like a reward <laughs> it's, like, it's like a reward yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you know you know Um, but it was crazy. And then people were, there were so many comments and I was like, ah, like what? Weird. But I liked it because I was like, now I feel like my videos have a purpose and somebody wants to see it. It's very validating. And of course, like you do it for yourself, but at the same time, it's nice to have an audience to watch your work. Especially when you're putting in so much like work and effort behind the scenes to create the videos. Absolutely. And then cut to 2021 around summertime maybe even April is when my account really did start to grow. And I was going from like a hundred thousand to 500,000 in the span yeah. of like two months. And that's you amazing. started, that's when you started doing your, I had um, all my skits. Yeah. So your series. Yes. Which is such as the rich dancers, <laughs> Carmichael lemon. I love Carmichael. Yeah. Lemon. You need to bring her back. What? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. So I just, I started creating characters because I was like, dance is a very, niche thing but i want to have it appeal to a lot of people right um that's so smart and yeah. as an actress too like you can do more with it than just dance and you guys understand yeah, that as well people yeah. enjoy people are able to enjoy your videos even if they aren't dancers yes right. and now it's just a character exactly and so um then i began to even branch out a little bit more through dance i pushed it to like more normalized yeah. content that right. everyone can enjoy so i have a balance now but yeah. um it's really just been amazing to like see the growth and meet all of these great people right. online or real life and just connect and meet Me. you guys. Yeah. yeah I'm Me. talking about you, Lexi. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but okay. seriously, because through it all, like TikTok has brought me two great friends and business partners, uh, co-workers. Co-workers. <laughs> co-workers, yes. We're just co-workers. Okay, We're not, Lexi, friends. We're not friends. actually friends now. Scratch that then. <laughs> um, but seriously, like it's, it's truly incredible and we all have very different journeys as it is, but it's yeah. nice to just see like the different, you know, absolutely of it. Okay, something that I think is very cool about all of our content is that we are very like dance heavy in yeah. our videos, Yeah, yeah. but we have little to no overlap in ideas and the fact that we can come up with so much stuff. And they're still original ideas. And even though, like, we'll still, like, maybe think of something. And, like, yeah. have, like a similar we could video talk every now and then. Like, too, about how there's been so many situations where, um, like, Lexi will post something or Bianca will post something and I'll be like, oh my God. How did I not think of how that? How did I not yeah. think about that? It's in my notes right now and I was going to post no, it tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, there's the story about, say. yeah, it was around November of 2020 because I remember it was around the election, the election yeah. and it was like an election video and Lexi had posted a video with a sound with the exact like, same caption. It's a dumpster crash. What is it? Yeah, it was, like, it was like, that was a dumpster on a fire and like, it was saying like, it's like that like was a, a hot, hot mess. mess in a dumpster fire in a whatever that sound yeah. was yeah and it was like my dance teacher reacting to me after like i go on stage right it was something like or that something or like, like that like and watching lexi the dance, yeah. lexi posted it and it was in my drafts like i had filmed it and i was planning to post it later that day at my uh, allocated posting time 
and I was so mad. Yeah. But that's when I knew we were gonna be great friends because yeah. great minds think alike. And that's then true. eight months later, we became friends. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's so funny though because like I like how we all think very similarly. Where yeah. we hear that sound and we're like, oh, we could take that and apply it to dance. Of like that's how we see these sounds. You yeah. know, like we have to apply them to dance because yeah. that's our niche. Yeah. And that's totally. what people like to see. Yeah. And it's really interesting. And I think that that's like a funny story because yeah. it's really hilarious. It yeah. um, cracks me up. Yeah, I'm laughing. <laughs> See, now you're I laughing. Think, <laughs> I think that's something that all of us do is we all keep a note app yes. and we put all of our ideas in it. So whenever we get an idea, we just jot it down. A lot of the times we have to make the script beforehand. I know like sometimes I like to just wing it, but I know Bianca like very much scripts her stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm a little different. Yeah. No, well, when I, I've done, I like, just improv. When I've done like things with you, you showed up, we did like a collab. We did the audition sabotage video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. We did a collab and she showed up and fun. she had like a list of... Well, I had a script. Yeah, so... she had a script and I was not prepared at yeah. all prepared. Well, I just told her <laughs> she had like one line, so it was fine. But... <laughs> And but she still yeah. was not off book. Well, after because, that. Yeah, I'm not off book. The thing is, though, like with the scripted series that I have, they're pretty heavy storylines after a while. So I have to have a script. I can't just like let it go where it wants to. There's a little bit of both, but I have to have an outline for those. But right. then also like sometimes improv is totally warranted depending on the video style. If it's a one off, of course. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would say like my series, they're always scripted for sure. When I was starting out, I was posting way more because everyone on the app was saying you need to post five to seven videos a day. I was doing five a day last yeah, year. But that almost doesn't perform as well if rather than if you have one amazing video that you post yeah. a day or one or two that are really geared towards mm -hmm. your content and what you're doing. One to three is a safe zone. I, I don't agree think that more is necessary. I think no. starting out slower is safer yeah. and then picking it up as you see what is working and what isn't working. It's really about that because it varies so much from person to person. There's no like one way to do it. It's yeah. not like There's no dry. correct way to like get a viral video. No, no, no. We're because still trying to figure it out sometimes yeah. too because sometimes our videos don't do well and we're like, I'm confused because we're, we're doing what we normally do, but yeah. they don't perform as well as a video yeah. that like was so similar to this that I posted two weeks ago. So we're still learning as we go as well. Yeah. But this yeah. is just what we've found that's worked for us. And something that you have to keep in mind, like even through all of the analytics and stuff is like to remember to enjoy the process, because for me, myself, I get so caught up in all of the numbers. And yeah, that's definitely something we should like touch because on because it's, our it's job. a mental game. Yeah, it really is. It is. All, as addicting as it is to like get the views and so like fulfilling it is equally if not more frustrating when you're not getting the views you think right. you deserve yeah. and you're putting so much That's time and effort and it's not, so much time and effort yeah and it's it. not all about the views of course but when you put so much time and effort into something and you're used to having people observe it and see it yeah when that suddenly diminished it's like oh maybe they didn't like it. it it messes with your head and you right. go into the it's like when you're a dancer in dance class it is if you don't nail that triple pirouette that day you're like oh i suck but same thing with posting tiktok content i feel like at it the same is time. because when i'll like i'll get a viral video that'll hit like over a million views and i'm satisfied for maybe like a couple hours mm -hmm. and then it's yeah. time to post the next video now it's, it's so like, numb i feel like at yeah. this point because after posting that one video i can't just like sit there and enjoy it because i have to keep it up yeah. And I have to like strike while the iron's hot and I have to keep going. If like people are viewing my page, I'm like, oh, let me post more videos now because then they're going to keep looking. But then it just goes back to the numbers that it usually was. And I'm like, darn, like I didn't even give myself the chance to enjoy that because I was so worried about like right. staying on top of it, you know? Yeah. And I think like for anybody listening right now, if you are on TikTok or if you want to start TikTok, you have to know like what you want to gain out of it because everybody can do it for different reasons. Like some people like posting to connect with people and grow their audience. Some people want to monetize, you know, their videos. Like there's different, That's a really there's good point. different yeah. facets. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is our experience, but you can take that at face value and figure out for yourself like, OK, maybe I want to start considering this as my job. Let me take these you know, tips or vice versa. Like there's so many different pathways right. and routes that you can go with the app. I can honestly say, though, and I feel like you guys can agree. I did not start doing this to get money out of right. it. I didn't no. even know that that was a right, thing. I joined the Creator <laughs> Fund in January. Yeah. Yeah. This like year. Yeah, literally this a couple year, ago. January this year, because I just like never really thought to do it it's just it wasn't something that 
crossed my mind. I was like, I want to make videos because I want to see if dancers out there have similar experiences yeah. to yeah. me. And I it was think like that a community. I found that target audience that has related to me. And I'm like, wow, like I'm not alone. I haven't gone yeah. through these experiences yeah. alone, which is so comforting. And then finding out like, oh, like this is something that you can monetize. I was like, what? Like, I didn't even yeah. understand how that worked. One thing I talked about um, with you guys earlier was saying that TikTok gave me a lot of like confidence to be myself because I was being so un like undeniably, what's the word? Like unapologetically, unapologetically yourself. <laughs> myself. Sorry, yeah. I have really bad word recall. I'm um, good at it, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah, you are. That was good. Yeah, I was being very unapologetically myself online. And for the first time ever, I felt like I was being like very accepted and people were not only accepting me, but enjoying the way right. I was acting. So it gave me the confidence, like now looking back, like since I started TikTok, I've become way more confident in who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. Whereas I don't feel like I need to like hide my personality or like change my personality around other people because- I'm not embarrassed. Like I'm not ashamed right. by it anymore. Yeah. And that really goes to show that you always just need to put out whatever you are as a person, yeah. be your true self and whoever likes that is going to follow you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I used to be so embarrassed by um, embarrassing things or like feeling bad about like I'm my so body cringe. or yeah. like sharing stuff like that on like TikTok because I've shared like a lot about like my like self-esteem and right. stuff like that. And, and that's very vulnerable. Of yeah. You. And I feel, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. You're like, you're so brave. <laughs> Such a giver. Like, thank you so much for sharing. No problem. I'm just like, I'm just here to give. So um, bold of you. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's been great to create a community and feel like I'm posting these videos and they're serving a purpose for others because I can maybe like help someone to feel like more confident in their like own bodies. Yeah, you know, awesome. I'm just inspiring one dancer at a time. Yeah, just one dancer at a time. No, that's I'm amazing, Becca. One plie at a time. One plie. That one should, that that should have been our podcast um, logo. Rats. One plie at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are we go? talking about? Like oh. purpose. <laughs> right. Or like, like a purpose opportunity. Or... Like you could talk about how like we've gotten like opportunity, like social media opportunities oh, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So like I never expected TikTok to be any sort of like reward, I guess, to me in any way. Like reward. I didn't. It's like a reward. No, I didn't expect to get anything out of it. Like I thought I was just posting, like you said, to create a community, which is an amazing feeling. And I'm so glad that I've done that. Yeah. But I've also gotten opportunities that I've never imagined that I would get from a social media platform. Yeah. And me and Becca both got asked to audition for a TV show back in what was it like October November yeah. and we both got it was like so exciting. Was we got so into like cool. the interview process. We got like called back to the interview process and I remember like we were both talking. We we're like, wow, like this can change our life. And it didn't because we didn't book it. But like <laughs> still just the fact that somebody saw us online and was like, I want you to audition for this show. Yeah. Like that never happened before. I'm yeah, so glad this. we didn't do it, though, because we couldn't be doing bar chat. No. So true. But then the same thing happened to me literally like a week or two ago. Like I got an email about auditioning for another show. And it's like this has happened two times now. I've yeah. been asked to audition for a show because someone's seen me online and they liked what they saw. Yeah. Like that is just. I, I can't even explain like how cool yeah. that is. Yeah. Whether I book it or not, like that's a, like that's not even the point. Like the fact that they saw me and they were like, right. I like you, you're cool enough, you're fun yeah. enough to like come and audition. And I love that. Like yeah. that's just such a great feeling. And I'm so mm -hmm. grateful for that because those are not opportunities that I've received yeah. before yeah. this, especially as like, we all would love to make it professionally in the dance world. And who knows like where TikTok can lead us, you know, mm -hmm. like it can give us more opportunities than we could have imagined. Oh, a hundred percent. 100%. So we'll see where it goes, but we're just like, this is just the beginning, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like, we have a long this way is to just go. the beginning. <laughs> um, Thank you. What about you, Bianca? Well, it's kind of touching back Nothing to really, right? what the actual topic was. <laughs> um, ha! um, About like your sense of self and everything. Um, I think that, to be honest, TikTok has made me more insecure. Really? Yeah, it has because I get bullied a lot. Oh, so, yeah. I have a lot of haters. Kidding. No, that actually is another no, thing. Like, Bianca true, does yeah. get so much hate online. Which I, is so unfair. It sucks. Well, she's a cool person. Yeah. Here's the thing. And I'm she's, not being sarcastic this time. Like, I actually like her. And she's fun. Her to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> she's not like, no, 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 no. We, we joke a lot, but this is serious. You're um, funny. Thanks. Yeah. I'm not going to say that again, though. Thank you. I'm going to hold that really dear. You um, have a video. Yeah. You saw it here. <laughs> she said it. I didn't. <laughs> we'll see. Um, obviously when you're online and you're doing social media, that's something that comes with it. It's 
part of the experience. If you put your content out there, anybody can see it. Anybody can have a say. They're going to give you their opinion because that's what social media is. Um, I don't think of myself as someone that's problematic at all. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, people just like to pick on me. But a lot of the times they'll go for physical appearance. And I've always been a very confident person. Yeah. But... As when you, you but when you hear the same comments just thrown at you every single day by thousands right. and thousands of people, yeah. you try to not let it get to you. It's but hard. Everyone has to remember that we're all so human. Right. We're real people. We're not just fake Barbie dolls that just post videos and don't sleep and pee and shower we're like the all rest real of everyone. People. We have feelings and yeah. words hurt. Like the they words really do. Hurt. do. And whether you're hiding behind a phone saying it to us or not, we've all somebody gotten, still said like, it. Like we have gotten hate comments and it hurts. So yeah. and just, you think about it. Like yeah. and we talked about this with the Dance Future podcast. It saying, goes back like, to the last episode. Exactly. Yeah. Like you can give us a million positive comments yeah. and that one bad comment is the one that's 100%. gonna stick with us. Yeah. And for me, it's definitely not just one. But you know, at the same time, like, yeah, I might be more self-doubting or insecure some days but then there's also a part of me that has found a new confidence in like my work that I do right yeah like the creation the videos that I put out people want to see it and that's enough I think that that speaks for itself yeah because for all of the haters that you're going to get and all of the it just means you're successful well yeah maybe so but that they're but taking the time to write that yeah on your video they are so but you still have all of your supporters exactly rooting for you at the exactly. same time so you just have to really learn how to disconnect right and not let that get the best of you and it is hard at times because like i said we're human everybody struggles right. um but that's part of the game that's part of being a social media person absolutely you know? people also say a lot of like rude things that are kind of funny at the same time like somebody said that you look like their teacher the other day oh my god <laughs> <laughs> commented on Bianca's TikTok and they go the girl in the teal looks like my fourth grade teacher Miss Fernand- Fernandez. Fernandez and I was like Miss Fernandez huh, that's interesting yeah you're like is that supposed to be an insult or what I mean I get comments every single day whether it's about my physical appearance about how I dance about my body which is totally not okay especially as a dancer I know that if you saw me in real life you would never say that to my face absolutely yes. they would never do that that's why social media is here though because people think that they can get away with everything but also a lot of these comments I feel like are coming from like younger like the younger generation and it's they like, shouldn't have TikTok if your or phones. parents saw what you were posting there's an age mm-hmm. limit on TikTok for a reason yeah and parents need to be more cautious of what they're letting their kids do. I'm not putting my kid on TikTok. No, Are you kidding me? TikTok, TikTok is, won't even be around when we're oh, yeah. parents. It's the number one app right now and it's full of a lot of different things and yeah. certain people should not be on the app because they could be, you know, saying things to people or having things said to them mm-hmm. and it's just not okay. It's not okay. But yeah, you know, it's just, it's part of the territory. It comes and it goes. Sometimes you get a lot of positive messages. Sometimes you get a lot Which of hate. Which are amazing. Yeah. But just like the algorithm in the for you page with engagement, everything just comes and goes and right. it shifts. It's like a roller coaster. You Absolutely. can't really you can't really predict it. The frog, the frog roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> At the pier. We went to Santa Monica Pier the other day because it's Lexi's first time in L.A. <laughs> we rode the frog hopper, which was like the children's ride. We didn't know that going into it, though. And that you're only allowed to have one adult on the ride at a time. So we took turns. We have videos we could put but in. But then the worst <laughs> thing was somebody commented on my video and they were like, I saw you on the frog hopper. And I was like, yeah. me oh, with like the so girls yeah. that I was like on the ride with. That's when they so, saw you. Yeah, I was like out of all places on the pier. Right. They see me like riding and I'm like, wee. Like, I don't yeah, know about you though, over. like the drop rides though, like make my yeah. stomach feel so weird. It's like butterflies. Oh, yeah. 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 I think that this episode was really important though, because I feel like a lot of our followers don't actually know, like a lot of the behind the scenes yeah. that go into 100%. planning our TikToks and how we started because some people started following us like when we had that big wave yeah. of followers and they didn't see or like yesterday started. or yesterday. So I think that this was really helpful, like a little insight totally. into our lives as you know, TikTokers. So yeah. I hope that this was entertaining. And if you guys ever want to have another episode, like if you want to hear another episode about TikTok and have questions for us, please ask us questions. Yeah. And we'd love to make even just like a Q&A video yeah. regarding dance yeah. or TikTok, all those things. So if you have any questions, please let us know. I hope this was informative. Yeah. And I guess we'll see you in two weeks in the next episode. Yes. Uh, Thank you guys for listening. Yeah. We're talking about some very painful things. So we hope you enjoy. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.